There we go. Oh my Check. God, I, I was on a yeah. roll and didn't realize that we weren't live. But anyway, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll back it up. So microphone check, one, two, what is this? None of this here roughneck business felt like gravity, never had a cavity. I don't know any more lyrics, but anyway, so <laughs> the the first uh, fine ass to to grace the FCP bar stool is none other than uh, retired ass model Daguerre Forge. Can you the show us only. the the show us the 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 ass that no 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 first, first show us the ass that paid oh. the bills. Oh, yeah. Okay, now show us the the chair that that ass is sitting on. Look at that. Amazing. Future cannabis project at its finest. Although I will say <laughs> when we came down the mountain, the foam deflated. So Oh, right, right, right. Uh, yeah, I didn't think about that when I was coming down the mountain. So is it but the foam it, it's like air it's like airy, right? Yeah, but it's like when you uh, like if you get a bag of chips and it's puffed out when you go up the mountain, it's because of the pressure. So it sucks. Right. All of it back down when the. Can you see through that back of the screen? Uh, uh, the tiniest tiny. I mean, it's definitely opaque. I mean, yeah, I can sort of see behind it. Yeah, we got those fresh ass press passes. <laughs> <laughs> we're unstoppable. Yeah. yeah Thanks, they're, James they're, North. They're, it they're, is a sick chair. What, what was that? Oh, James North said sick chair, bro. And I was like, fuck yeah, bro. It is a sick chair. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, Cheddar Bob, we, we now have an Ethernet cable. Bro, Cheddar Bob, you're going to love this. Beautiful. And I can, you can hear my voice pronunciate as I talk shit. Yeah, I still I still have our eight bit uh, just in case we need it. I have our eight bit graphics queued up. Did you see this? The SM7B. See this? I do. I do. Very beautiful microphone. It is. We will be picking up sticks nonstop tomorrow and the next day. So yeah, th this is a uh, move in day for everyone watching. So mm -hmm. you get to Here, see the behind me, uh, the scenes. I'll get the I'll get the camera. Yes, look at that. <laughs> Are those pounds in the uh, in the uh, in the bins? Yeah, you want to randomly grab some people, and uh, <laughs> we could do the bonus like four hours of pre-conference live footage. Yeah. Look at our spot. So where is uh aim towards like the entrance? The entrance is where? Like we're generally that way. Oh wait, that's uh stop, stop. Is that royal gold two boost down? Yeah. Look at that. One of our sponsors. Yes, two they are two down. Yeah, they're right there. Yeah, go say hi to Michael Beck. I, I'm well, gonna they're, send they're all not the there, but their booth is there. Ah, okay. But yeah, yeah, I was gonna send all the uh, connecting emails to everyone as we uh, strong style. If you fly out, I got dabs for you, bro. I got that good shit. Yeah, I think there's gonna be a lot of dabbing. What are did did you ask them if you could sneak in some dab? Or um, you might as no, well. Just... I, we just just now got this Ethernet hooked up, and it's taken me like four hours to do this. So, you know, low and slow. Yes, welcome to the world of of conference broadcasting where you don't know what you're getting yourself into. Um, so I assume it, it's, uh, I would say like the last one where at the end of day two, you guys just started dabbing. Is that kind of uh, something we I would could do? I would, I would say I am fully prepared to do what is needed to be done. That's what I'll I, say. I that. like that. That is the attitude yes. I like. Yes, I didn't come empty-handed, my friends. I'll say yeah, that. So, so, by the way, I did the I did the glove reveal earlier oh, today. Oh, bro! Beautiful, 
beautiful. Look at those. And I'll, I'll be wearing those. So I, I actually, I, I had visions of like having the gloves on and then having like the girl who walks around with the scorecard, <laughs> like, yeah. like Round holding this, ho Ding holding Ding. this, no, holding this up to my mouth. Cause I can't smoke with the gloves on. Right. Um, well now with that attitude. <laughs> yeah. park, all man. thumbs you can do anything you want if you put your mind to it yeah though it becomes much harder when you have uh it, it'd be did like you, wearing did mittens you, did you put them on though they feel good they feel tight uh, they feel amazing yeah yeah, yeah. Gemma and I, lift, i'm gonna i'm gonna go like that i'm gonna beat the piss out of Gemma <laughs> in our in our first fight <laughs> put them up put them up she talks a tough game until she gets punched in the face the first time yeah but no, that's cool. What'd you do it on the glove? Re, re. Did you have a show uh, this morning? Yeah, I would. A show would be a very loose. Uh, <laughs> I, I basically okay. was. Uh, actually, I can show you. I, I was looking at an aphid under the microscope, and uh, we had an impromptu show. Okay, SOS Death Valley, you're in Oklahoma. You should head on over to the show. Yeah, Cheddar Bob wants his royalties. Ah, <laughs> uh, Cheddar Bob. All right, so. Bro, I would, Cheddar Bob, I love you and Honcho. I'd love to see you guys go at it. We should do a FCP for charity fight club. Oh, yeah. fuck yeah. Dude, I'd get my ass Oh, fuck, dude. I, I have the space for it, too. The, the yeah. There's like a... I need to pull up pictures of it, but it's this space that I've been thinking about pulling the trigger on um, partially or mostly for doing events, but it, it you could totally set up a, uh, a ring in there. We used to do that uh, bud boofing. when I was in New York, I had the FDNY and the NYPD as clients and we would go out in the field with them like the bomb squad and we'd fit like, like when, when the plane landed in the Hudson River, we were the only people with cameras who were allowed um, to basically go like with the FDNY uh, kind of like beyond like where anybody else was allowed to go. And we got some crazy, and, and then they, they said they gave us the security camera footage, for like when they, uh, w whatever the word is, like they demand the footage from like industrial, like, like ba basically places along the water that had security cameras, the FDNY and the NYPD were like, we need your security footage. And then they gave it to us to edit videos about the um i forget which unit we were with that time but anyway we we used to do their uh like fdny nypd uh fight nights oh yep 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 and uh which was awesome like you know i had like three camera guys filming the fights and uh but yeah we could totally do the uh the fcp smackdown yeah, it'd be fun. Cheddar Bob. Occasionally, I take uh, liver punches at work, but that's about as far as I go lately. Yeah, see, even with these gloves on, I can't scroll up in the chat to see what <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. Dude, they feel great, though, right? Oh, they feel awesome. Man, like you punch through walls. Yeah, now I just need a bag. What? Here. Hey, Brian wants to ask you something. Oh, we can tell that the Bioag logo is ripped off the internet. So I don't know if you can get me that one. And uh, I know, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm still up. waiting. I'm yeah, I'm waiting for theirs as the last one. Here. Yes, Brian, oh. they are in Oklahoma. You're good. Check, check, check. The uh, Bioag is still sending a logo, and. Uh, but I think we have all. I think we have Royal Gold. We have Bovida. We have Green Bros. And just yeah. waiting for Bioag. Let me see if Vic has. Uh, uh, and the Green Bros. I'm gonna have to work on that one. It's not popping up on our thing, so I might have to grab the white one instead of the black one. 
Oh, because the black doesn't look good on the... Uh... Uh, yeah, it's not popping up for whatever reason. So uh, everything else seems to be working great. All right, now I lost you guys. There you are. I'm going to work on the, the green. Okay. All right, well, I think... Uh... So g give me, I mean, you, you've been heads down for the past four hours, but uh, have you, like, interacted with anyone or not really? Um, yes. Yes and no. Um, the people I have interacted with are very shocked by my name, and they it's hard to say for them. Um, <laughs> so that's been a thing. G give us the correct pronunciation. Gare Arel Forget. What's the uh, Arel? It's my middle name. Well, no, I know that, but where where does that come from? I think uh, either France or Romania. Okay. Maybe it's Greek. I'm not sure. But yes, no, they're uh, they've been kind. Um, the staff here has been a lot better than the staff at. Uh, where the hell were we at the uh, uh the the no co hemp expo yeah but it's called the denver western complex i believe uh, uh oh like the facility people yeah no these these people have been great they've been great power ethernet like it's just taken a little bit but they've been really really good to us that's but other awesome. than that it's um everyone's super busy uh not not much Cheddar Bob speaking and Yoda speak. In the basement, they put you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are not, not in the basement this time. Actually, no. give us another uh, oh. camera angle again. Yeah. Yeah, so this is, uh, what. what's the name of the venue? Uh, the Oklahoma Convention Center. The Oklahoma Convention Center. And this is like brand new, right? Yes. That was a yes. It's going to be a party on Thursday. Wait, say that into the mic. Five to six thousand people. Five to six thousand people. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that's referring to. Uh, should get me in tune with my inner child. And then. Whoops. That's what the doctor said at circumcision. It is a big spot. Who's the guy uh, next to Brian? That is Red Dirt Raised. He has oh. been um, very... That's, uh, that's your boy, right? Uh, he's been very kind to us so far. Excellent. I'd say I don't call anyone my boy unless they've earned it. So, he's Am got I your it. boy? Not yet, no. You're just an okay. affiliate. So. Right. <laughs> I'm working gotta, hard to earn you gotta that You got to take some hits. You got to take some hits, Peter. We but no, will. we're uh no, he's been um very kind to us. He's uh let us stay at this apartment while we're down here. Oh, cool. Um and we're talking about um him possibly uh sponsoring flower and some other things. <laughs> in the future uh events we're taking over oklahoma like i'm i'm hungry like excellent i'm, I'm ready hungry. to throw down I'm oklahoma throw down. will not know what hit them no it's so funny i was telling brian i was like yo we could go like old school like you ever play uh nail log when you're drunk like in the country anybody play that you get a big log with the stump and you put nails around it and you get all drunk and you all put a dollar in you flip the hammer and you try to see who can smash the nail in the fewest times, and whoever does gets all the money. And then the drunker you get, the harder it is. Like, so everybody's nail is only in, like, a tiny bit. Yeah. And then if it only takes you one pound, you're the winner. Mm-hmm. 
Got it. I have never played that. Ah, uh, you never lived. But we're gonna do that. <laughs> we're gonna do that, but with like dabs. So all these people down here that think they get high, we can uh, go dollar for dollar. <laughs> go dab for dab. The heavyweight champion of the world has rolled into Oklahoma. Don't get it. Bring on all comers. It's technically, like the, uh, technically I'm, a, I'm a welterweight right now, not so much a heavyweight. <laughs> who, who would be the heavyweight in your mind? Uh, Brian, how much <laughs> you weigh right now? Yeah, no, yeah, no, no. Brian, but, but Brian's who, who, 205, so he's technically a heavyweight. Who, who can run circles around you on a dab rig, though? Anyone? Maybe, honestly, maybe Justin Gaethje and this guy after I taught him, though. But yeah, Justin's about the one of the few where I've actually like, I'm like, yeah. He's like, you You've know. tapped out before him? I've tried to put him down and I can't. So yeah. So, so, I've so in before. the ring and at the dab bar. <laughs> I am not as good as a man, correct. I am... I'm working towards those. Cheddar Bob, 148 to 155. Is that what you naturally set at? Or that's what you cut weight to? So let me actually, since we're doing My, a, a check know. here, I'm going to bring someone else who I was supposed to do a, uh, a mic check with into the conversation. Can I still pilot holes? <laughs> Uh, it's yeah those games are fun yeah i i really like the city like oklahoma the part we've seen it's nice like i don't uh it really reminds me of like north and south dakota if any of y'all from there i like detroit when i went uh that must have been two years ago now like the old city, kind of yep. like what you yep. what you envision, like going to a Red Wings game in 1950, yep. like seeing Gordy Howe play, and everybody's wearing like their top hats and trench yeah. coats, and that's where my grandma was uh, from. Driving like a Chrysler, 1950s Chrysler. Nude body painting, live and uncut. No, Greg. All right, this should work. <laughs> Although if they do, we could do it live on camera. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I get it, right? But like, I don't know. I'm super OCD. And I don't want paint on my shit. I don't want to keep cleaning it all the time. Okay, so I'm gonna bring someone on. Uh, coming at us from Kansas. Oh, how's it going? Our what resident up? glass blower, Katie Please. and Brad. Hey, can you can you guys turn your camera sideways so it's more TV like? Oh my God! Camera. Look at that! Awesome! Huh? So Bob oh, Snodgrass hey, disciples in the hey, house. Hey, so, hey, we're say what up? So we were do, we were doing a, a mic check um, from that they're they're at Canacon and oh, I'm getting feedback from someone. That might be you got. Uh, so it's they're at Canacon in Oklahoma City, and uh, we're going to be doing two straight days of live uh, conversations from the show floor starting tomorrow. So awesome. we're doing a mic check, and I figured we could do one with you guys too, yeah, uh, in preparation of our upcoming glass blowing conversation. Practice. Hear myself. What's happening, guys? What's up here? Hold on. Let, let me throw it to the glass blower. I'm going to mute you uh, for one second. Uh, so Brad and Katie, let me hear you guys talk for a second. Uh, yeah, Peter, can you can you hear me all right? You sound That's good. good. That's good because we got a pretty loud fan on in here. Yeah, we have the fans on. But if you can hear, if I, if I at least project this loud, if you could hear that, it's probably doable. Yeah, no, I think uh, like you're a little better than Katie because you're slightly closer to the mic. Absolutely. Yeah. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yeah, I mean, I can hear you both ways. Uh, we can always crank up your audio, but yeah, no, I mean, it it, it works as our baseline. Nice. Uh, I, yeah, what, and I what think you... I might I might be on the earphones and just mostly talking while maybe she's working, and then I we could you know yeah, could... cover a lot of bases with that format going. So what are, what are you guys blowing today? What's uh, what's today's project for both of you? 
I actually already finished mine, but I just finished like a little like pocket Sherlock, like a little hand Sherlock, and it came out pretty good. It, is it is it like baking right now, or can we see it? It's in the kiln. I already took it off okay. the too. You can. Um, there's a video of it on my Instagram story though, um, so you can check it out there. I know Do you I guys have any pieces that you can hold up Vanna White style and? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I. I I, I do. Hold on. Let's Just see. to give people a sense, they're like, who are these two random people? All at home. Right so now. actually, Katie, can you see that? Hold are on. You, are you are you live right now, Peter? We are live right oh, now. Okay. Hey, hey peeps. Do you oh, see that? God. Someone Let's said, Katie, see. holy shit. Cheers to you and so they know who you are. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> that There's is beautiful. There's a hammer beautiful. from um, last week. Oh, yeah line work with honeycombing that's nice so you guys are kind of really good at the art of glass blowing uh that's relative but yeah i mean we have a lot of fun doing it that's for sure no, I love it. I, I, uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I mean, I think some people know who each of you are. So this is uh, Spun Chun on Instagram and Katie Wright on Instagram. But uh, I, I love both their stuff, and uh, we're gonna, we're gonna start doing hopefully a weekly glass show, and uh, and uh, this will be, I, I guess, episode two with like a three month. But like the very first episode was with Giovanni and uh, oh nice, and I'm totally blanking on who the other you you know the other guy he was also an older guy. Um, oh, sweet. And, and those are recorded on YouTube. I can check it out. Yeah, I'll try to find it and I'll send you the link to it. Um, but uh, yeah, the the idea is weekly glass conversations with people who are talented in the in the fine art of glass blowing. And I'm looking for uh, some more new pipes, too. I keep breaking all mine. <laughs> Can't lie. I think I broke two pipes this last week. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, you have, you have some future uh, clients. Awesome. Yeah, I can barely hear them. Yeah. Us? Check. Picking I think up. On our, uh, when we do the, when we do the uh, podcast proper, I think I'll Did you tell get the ear, earphones. Yeah, yeah so when you get earphones, get kind of the old school tethered ones, not the Bluetooth ones, because the Bluetooth ones don't play nicely with uh, with browser based video. I don't like the audio. EMFs going off right in my ear canal anyway. Okay, good, yeah. good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, these old school ones. But uh, anyway, I think. Uh, oh, so sorry. What's Katie's insert? Why not? Let me pull up Katie and Brad's Instagram. Hold on. Give me one second so you can see who these people are. Katie, right? Come on down. All right. Hold on. <laughs> let me. It was nice to meet you guys. I have a, a short appointment I have to attend to. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, are we nice going to see you tomorrow? Nice to meet you guys. You guys are down at a show. Yes, sir. Look forward to Yep. Yep. Yeah. Have a okay. Show. So this is Katie. Daguerre, Daguerre, could you see yourself? Uh, do, do, you, do you do dab rigs too for Daguerre who likes I've to dab? I've a couple of rigs, but I'm pretty new to that. So I'm still kind of like dialing in like my well, shape one. and like how I. Yeah, there's one. So yeah. I would say the thing with dab rigs or uh, anything smoking concentrate, it's all about the suction. Mm -hmm. If the suction isn't perfect, it doesn't really matter what the pipe looks like. Yep, gotta That's have four-man function. Yep. Oh, that was a collab with uh, another local glass blower. His name's Ryan Haney, uh, Selfless Glass. We we made that a couple weeks back. That was really fun. And then the uh, Chillum lineup. Yeah, that looks nice. Yeah, those are nice. Those so are nice. I was saying to Katie yesterday, I, I love her color palette. Like they just, it just is like happiness. Like when I see your glass, it just makes me happy. Oh, shucks, dude. Thanks. <laughs> I feel the same way about it. How it long looks, have you it been? Looks edible. Yeah, her pipes look edible to me. They look like sherbet flavors or something. Oh, yeah. How they long have you been delicious. making? Yeah. Making pipes. That, that one. That one looks definitely lemon limey. That one gave me Shrek vibes. Sh Shrek vibes. And look who's look who's liking your stuff. The one and yeah, only Giovanni. Giovanni. Hi, guy. <laughs> so 
what what I think is kind of cool, it, it's like the glass blowing world is full of kind of like apprentice relationships, right? Like people kind of like teaching I, I, other people and yes, definitely. I I think as differently as, as far as an art movement, different than say uh, on a different pace and a different scale than say like painting or something like that. So let me pull up your... You know, there's so much more formal education. Spun Chun. All right. Give me one I second. Think also, I think also what's unique is the spirit of collaboration. I don't think that you see that near as much in other mediums or... Do you have that one here? I just put that in the mail this morning. That one, yeah, the corn cob. Thanks. Yeah, I would uh I would be happy smoking out of both of your pipes. Thanks, Peter. Yes. Yeah, so here's the the Chillum uh so kind of what what's trending like in, in terms of like sty like uh spoon, Sherlock, hammer, chill like what what's kind of where's the demand or is it kind of equally I as, I think especially since um, COVID, like the pandemic, everybody has been wanting a little personal pipes. I think the Chillums really took off, even though I was seeing kind of an increase in the fall before that anyway. I guess it was like September of 2019 just seemed like dry. It was like the fascination with dab kind of wore off a little bit and people were realizing, oh yeah, I do like flour. And they went back and the dry pipe seemed to, at least for me personally, I don't talk to a million glass so I have no idea about everybody else's experience, but it seemed to me that dry, dry pipes took off again, you know, a couple of years ago. What, was this a collaboration? Yeah, that's a bluegrass glass. He's the, that uh, uh, lava lamp guy. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. I kind of like the lava lamp. lamp. Yeah, his... Uh, I really need to go up there and see how he does it. They're just amazing. All that lathe uh, shaping is so flawless. Yeah, that was a collab. Yep. Very cool. Well, no, I'm psyched. I mean, to, you know, for me, it's just going down. Rat like, I want you guys to dork out in our glass conversation where the rest of us are just trying to keep up. Where, like, you're talking technical techniques that have been, like, like, like Katie, give, give me something that Brad taught you that took a while to master. I mean, like a technique. Probably like, well, I mean, all of it, but the line work definitely. Like learning how to like spin up all those sections and uh, put them together and have all the lines come together perfectly. And um, you know, for a while, I was doing like some of his like prep balls, like during my apprenticeship. So I'd be like spinning up most of his prep so I'd have to make sure that like those balls look good enough to go on his pieces so you know there but the shaping too honestly like shaping is really important and there's a lot of she's she's really good though little things going on with it so yeah no, yeah all of it was was hard to, <laughs> to learn I don't think anything really came super easy for me but it, i was lucky to be able to like have brad right next to me at the table so he was able to put a lot of time into it with me yeah i think out of out of all the apprentices i'm most of them i sit next to for maybe two years before they go off and start their own shop but katie and i've been working right next to each other for six years now come this summer so yep. i don't really can, you know can, can you turn the camera the other way so we can get a feel for the shop itself like are there other people in there right now yeah sure. so we've got a bunch of um new oh, cool. renters here at illuminated glass and uh let's see this table's got a four stations on it um that's alex over there he's been with us since 2017 i i just asked him that today if, about how long it has been so there's another see there's another four stations over on the west side here and there's jake he just started with us and there's a guy mark and he's over on the other side there and uh ryan nature's finest glass he'll be there again soon and then alex yeah and then 
Let's see, head back over to the east side. This is Connor. He's also a new renter. Um, Katie gives our beginner classes. And uh, so sometimes we rent out the spot if they're, they look like we could hang with those kind of people all day. Well, and, I was going to say, is that is that kind of the like, it, if I would want to hang out with you and like maybe even collaborate, you can rent a spot here? Yeah, I off, we offer um, two levels of classes. There's like your crash course, uh, just come for three hours, get your feet wet. Katie teaches all of that because I've lost my threshold patience for being the doing the first day lessons. But uh, so you get three uh, three hours of instruction and like an hour of play time. That, and then there's a second level class uh, where you start to work with some hollow forms. It's another four hours. And then after that, if you like, I rent a spot daily. You could just practice for a whole day with a, you know, you can use free scraps and I'll, I provide the eyewear, the torch, the gas, all that. You can come rent $50 a day and just play with it until you see if you like it. And, and you do, pepper rent, you with I, questions all day long. That's, that's where the personality <laughs> part comes into play because, you know, it's, I, I got work to do too. So, right. But I like helping people. And Bob was so free with the information. I feel it's my duty to keep, you know, passing it on. And, yeah, I feel like when we and, and, and here, what's... We like go them. ahead. We just want to make sure that like they don't quit. Yeah, I want to make sure that it, right. they don't quit. As a lot of them, that where they really show the heart, you know, they, they have the right angle on it. They're really respectful. And then it's... It's going to be fun hanging out with. I could bring in fresh minds in. I mean, you'd be amazed that I could learn from a guy that's only been in there six days just because there's so many ways to skin a cat in this game. They could come up with something wholly original. So it's really fun to have new, you know, fresh blood in, in the shop, really. what What's the Kansas glass scene like? Like, how would you compare it to, because you were, were, were you in Oregon immediately prior to Kansas? Or like, where? what was your last stop? Yeah, I, I, my apprenticeship with Bob, he lives in Glenwood, Oregon, sandwiched between Eugene and Springfield. And uh, so, yeah, I was there in 97, 98, uh, working there. And yeah, I've been in Lawrence ever since. Yep. Wow. That's uh, so that the like 25, 20 something years. Yeah, yeah, 20, you know, 25, 20 something years. Yeah, 23 years. 23. And what, yeah, what made you, years. what made you pick Kansas as your uh, destination? Uh, I went to high school here, and uh, yeah, my wife's from here, and and I've got four kids and a mortgage, and the cost of living in Kansas is super nice, and uh, you know, the coast is kind of cutthroat. I don't know, I don't know where you got, where are you guys? Um, we're, I'm out of, me and Brian are out of Denver right now, but it's definitely not as comfortable as living as Kansas prices. That's for tell, sure. Tell me this. If you're in Denver, do you consider yourself a Midwesterner or do you? I'm so I am a gypsy. I'm from Michigan, the Dakotas, Montana, like everywhere. So uh, earth, earth is mine. It's that's mine. really nice. Yeah. I don't claim a state cause it's all mine. I, I live in LA now, but I'm from Boston. Oh, so. nice Boston. Yeah, yeah. And, I had uh, a boss from Boston once. You know. <laughs> Big but, but, but so what's what's the what's the scene like in Kansas? Like, how has it kind of evolved over the past 20 years? We have a lot of really, really talented people, like specifically just like in Lawrence, honestly. Like, it's kind of like the hub. Um, because it's so cheap to get in, it's kind of easier to start up down there, huh? I think so. Yeah, if you want to rent, you know, have a place with a garage and right. not pay pay a ton of money, especially in the beginning, it's going to help to be in a place where your cost of living is low. Not yes. to mention the probably even the propane and the oxygen and all that stuff. Yep. Yep. Do you, you know? Do you see? Do you delivery. see AJ's question? Uh, you went to high school? Uh, I went to uh, Shawnee Mission West in Johnson County. Over, it's like a suburb of Kansas City. Just about 45 minutes from Lawrence. And I'm noticing the Jayhawks. Uh, yeah, yep, yeah, Hawks, yep. Yeah. Love them. Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce, that's right. Yeah. Celtics. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. So, all right, well, cool. Oh, well, the, okay, well, the glass scene. I. Kansas is always, well, for a long time, you know, during the George Bush years, you know, zero tolerance. So... I think the fact that weed is so, was so, I mean, it's 
slightly less now. Um, like in Lawrence uh, city limits, it's s somewhat decriminalized. But I think because weed has always been illegal, the glass, because we haven't had a legalized explosion here, it's still an underground thing, which I don't know why, but it maybe gives it a little edge of still like, cutting edge, outlaws dangerous out outlaw <laughs> life, you know, I mean, nobody really harasses us, but, you know, it kind of still has that, that feel, you know, it's pretty nice, actually. I, it'll be nice when everything goes legal, but I'm, I think that's what part of propelled its yeah, we popularity, are, maybe. I feel like we're, like, like we're kind of skirting in a gray area. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, we're in Douglas County, so we can make these pipes and not get messed with. But if you just go 30 minutes away from here into Johnson County, glass pipes are illegal. Yeah. So... The, the pipes themselves are illegal. Yes. Absolutely, yeah, yes. one county over, yeah. It doesn't even matter if you're wow. clean or whatever, just like having a glass pipe. Wow, that county like must suck. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like where all the angry old people live? Um, no, actually it's uh, it's like a rich, white, um, middle class, uh, you know, middle-aged, yeah. you know. Nice. I don't know why, I don't know why. You, like they're kind of on the liberal side they just there's a couple areas that just have a really backwards uh pipe policy i have no so idea. if you're really like a 17 year old kid it. and you get caught with a pipe there what happens yeah clean pipe um you'll probably get hit with a paraphernalia charge if you're 17 you probably have to do like diversion or something Okay, how, how about like 22? Like you're you're an adult. Like, are you going to jail? Are you getting a ticket? Or? Uh, no, probably, not. probably not. Yeah. No, but probably a ticket. Yeah, yeah, even if it's clean, which would be like you never find that anywhere else. Oh, you can't have a store there. I couldn't have a shop there. Yeah, there are no you know. And then you're in like the equivalent of like as Austin is to the rest of Texas. That's kind of like. Kind of, yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. Like people let their hair down and. <laughs> it's okay yeah. though. I really like it. I really cool. like all of Kansas. It's beautiful. Yeah. Kansas well, for everybody watching, this is a a taste of Brad and Katie, uh, and we're gonna schedule awesome. our. But but w it'll be very easy and impromptu because you guys are basically in the shop all the time so <laughs> all the time we can be like let's go live tomorrow and make it happen so yeah yeah hey, I, i'm gonna have to apologize um my friend down there at the show i didn't i it was so soft i didn't even get your name and where you really were are you talking to me yeah yes. sir. oh my name is daguerre forge daguerre yeah and, we're out of we're out of denver oh, okay i know you're out of denver is that where you are right now uh, no, we're in Oklahoma right now. Okay, Oklahoma that's what City. I thought I heard. You were down yep. third location. Yeah, tomorrow or next. I mean, next time we do the podcast, I'll have your phones in. I'm yeah. sorry, I missed that. Oh no worries. I was just saying. Um, I'm originally from uh, Michigan. You were asking if I was a Midwesterner. Yes. And I'm. I'm. Uh, technically, yes. I did. You know, Michigan, Minnesota, the Dakotas, Montana. Yeah, I can hear it in your voice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> don't you know? Go order don't down the way. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. Oh sorry. Uh, yeah, I need more. I need you to talk in Fargo. Uh, yeah. it, talk you know, it comes out tomorrow. harder when I'm drinking, because like when I'm drinking, it for some reason it comes out hard. <laughs> That's awesome. It's like that state dependent learning where you really draw out the A's and E's and O's. Yes. So, oh it's yeah. Like, it's like oh, every yeah. every hockey player I ever played with, Canadians <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm really I'm really excited about your project. I've watched a couple of your. Um, your things on soil and man, man people really know their stuff it's so impressive yeah yeah yeah, yeah um, getting way down into that microbiome and the really really trace uh nutrients and stuff it's so well so, so the same thing we've done with soil let's do with glass yeah absolutely i want to get Ooh, in as i would as, love as in-depth as you guys want to get yeah i'm willing to I, go there and, and i always go make it meaningful i always get into verbal um I guess you would call them arguments about China glass and soda glass and how they're not the same as boro. And even the boro from China isn't the same as American boro glass. Now it's not created the same. Yeah. I, I, I've definitely noticed there's like a, some thermal coefficient difference where they, um, where they meet, you definitely see a line, but they're yep. somewhat compatible. 
uh, the, and and then they I don't think they have the infrastructure to kiln every piece of tubing that comes out. I mean, a lot yeah. of it is you know, like shocky because it just hasn't been treated very nice. They don't pack it nice. I mean, there's a lot of things. The dust that comes on yep. a lot of the packages, I'm wondering what's even in that dust. You have to, like, yeah, I've had friends not wash their pipes out and they got some of that dust in their hits. Because back in the day, we'd always be like, yo, wash the pipes out because they used to drill the carbs back out. Oh, yeah, that's that's hardcore. And I was man. like, yo, you guys, like, it's not the weed that's getting you. It's Yeah, it's yeah, everything. yeah. You don't want any glass dust, man. That's silicosis. It's no, no joke. Yeah, not yeah. yeah. No, and you can't get rid of silicosis. No. There's nothing for that. Yeah, little tiny tumors in your lungs, little yeah. skin shells around each little particle of glass. So it's pretty gross. But yeah, I'm a... Uh, I love pipes. I've been smoking since I was 13. Word. You know, I was going to say it's kind of an extension. You know, when I, uh, you know, when you're like that age and you, you go into the closet and pull, it's like, what can I make a bong out of? Yeah. And I wanted like, to do a, a show of everyone's first time they got high. I love those stories. I think the first time it worked for me, I remember the first time. That, that's the critical it. point is when it first when it worked. Because I smoked a bunch of times before I ever finally was like, I am super high right now. Yeah, and I can't remember. I was so young. I can't remember if I just wasn't really inhaling all the way or if it's chemical and, like, you know, some receptor needs a signal to turn on in the first place. I have no idea. But, yeah, I, I can remember that I'd move my head. And it would take a second for my vision to kind of catch up with, you know, yeah, uh, 13 or 14 or yep. you know, stealing swag out of my friend's dad's sock drawers. Yeah, that was the good old days. Yeah, yeah. yeah I moved Smoking from out of pop to cans. Nebraska and, yeah. and uh, when I was 13, I think that's when it happened right around then. Yeah, prime time. <laughs> Mine was probably like I made a fucking bong out of like a water bottle and a pen, a bottle or something. <laughs> and this isn't the first time I smoked, but this is the first time I actually got like high. And I like went out into this field behind my parents' house, and I like smoked a bunch of weed. And then I was walking back to my parents' house, and I was staring straight ahead, and I was like, I'm walking, but I'm not getting any closer. I think I'm fucking stuck. <laughs> and then I had to like look to the side and be like, Oh no, I'm moving. I'll, yeah. I'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Each step is a half a step of the yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh my I, god, the horizon is not getting yeah. any closer. Yeah. To me. I'm stuck. I remember when I took mine for high, I just remembered the first thought was like, yo, my fucking parents lied to me. I was like, this shit's <laughs> awesome. They're a bunch of liars. Uh, that's awesome. Because they put us through all that dare program and such. Oh, when yeah. Your kids out in Michigan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't like, nah. see how, how, how old ish are you don't ballpark. I actually just turned 35. Oh, actually. man. Oh, yeah. You're a baby. Awesome. You're yeah. just a I got baby. That, I got that Armenian blood, so I age very well. Oh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> how about you, Peter? Where are you in there? I'm I'm in the 45 uh, age bracket. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. You're. With, I'm with you. So, yeah, I, I was <laughs> the peak of the, the 80s. I'm trying to uh, stay with you. I, I yeah, we had Nancy Reagan with the dare, and then Ronald Reagan with the uh, physical fitness. I remember like my fourth grade gym class, we'd have to do like push ups and pull ups and yep. sit ups as part of like the yep. the presidential like before they made participation get America award. fit. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I had to do that in school too, the presidential fitness Ooh. exam thing. Ooh. I can't do a pull up. Like, <laughs> I, I Reagan, dominated though, at the uh, Reagan and Bush. They made it hard on pipes. Those guys. Yeah. Do you remember the old uh, degenerate art film? Oh yeah, I got a new kid in here from Germany, and he had he already makes bong slides, but he had no contextual background on the glass one. So I just pointed that out to him today. It's for free on YouTube. Dude, yeah, I really wish. Actually, if anybody knows all those dudes, they should make a second one. I, did, I think Katie, they made didn't, didn't we talk off. about that yesterday, Katie? Yeah, they need degenerate art too. Electric because blue. Because banjo, <laughs> banjo has been blown. I don't know if anyone you know follows banjo, but like he was in that first one, uh, like Zeke or what's his name. You know, there's a lot of dudes, but those dudes are crushing it. Right? Oh yeah, it's ridiculous. Crushing it. They just took the ceiling of, you know, the medium and just 
blue yeah. and sky. You know, there's no ceiling now because no. of those guys. Yeah. No. I appreciate all the art. I, it's hard for me to buy it because, like, when I buy stuff for this, it's like, you know, I need four to ten at a time. And some people are like, yeah, I need, you know, $3,000. And it's like, yeah, cool, $3,000 for ten pieces. And they're like, nah, $3,000 a piece. Yeah, for one I need, piece. I need 30 k for ten pipes. And I'm exactly. like, oh, okay. Let me. Yeah, isn't that crazy? This. Yeah. It's and it was a, like when I used to one color. when I first got in the game before even blue glass, my whole me and the wife, the whole thing was to <clears throat> spend a thousand dollars on on Bob's apprentices pipes. Yep. yep. Bring that back to Kansas. And learn. That was maybe 10 pipes, you know, yeah. because those were like like ninety dollars was getting heady, you know, yeah. for like a Bob Batram <clears throat> Sherlock with aliens, fumed aliens on it. Yeah. That might be the best one might have been 110, 110. Yep. So I'd have to, I would try to bring that back to Kansas to sell it for like 175. You know, just oh, yeah. yep. try it. And then just enough to make enough concert, you know, enough money to get more dead tickets. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so I did, you know, so I learned about them through just being a glass salesman, really. Yeah. But yeah, the price change, because yeah, it was like, it all 90, changed. 90 was good. 80, yeah. 80, 75 dollars. I found that when uh, when that scientific glass really took off, it's when all the prices started to get out of control because they would sell you clear pipes for like 250 bucks. And you're like, yo, I just got a fumed worked pipe for 200 bucks. Why are you selling me a clear piece of glass for 200 bucks? Yeah, oh, it's rainbow perk, triple, triple diffused. And I was like, yo, every time I diffuse it through water, though, it takes my product out. And he's like, oh, well, yeah, but it's it's you know it's like nah it's taking my stuff and it's too much and it's clear like why why'd that happen i never understood that part yeah i i'm trying like, to remember uh, what was it mothership come out mothership I, you know, they had all that clear shit for like ten thousand dollars it's like dude what is this like what is this i missed a lot of the trends because a lot of the times i feel like the the push to stay unique and this is in the in the past yeah before be, I was cutting myself off from seeing too too much. I never went to the trade shows, that type of thing. I was just trying to isolate what I was doing in a kind of a vacuum so that I wasn't copying stuff. Yeah. And I, yeah. maybe by accident. So I missed a lot of when when those events happened. I'm just kind of like working in my garage going away until about 2015 or so. Then I finally, you know, Andrew one Mitchell, one of my apprentices from a long time ago convinced me to get an instagram account and that's when it kind of like yeah opened back but, up for me yeah i feel like there's a there's a hard line in the glass and canvas community where you know maybe it's like yeah i'm somebody you're good at your art but that what justifies a thirty thousand dollar piece versus like you know three hundred dollar piece because some dude made it it's like well that's What's what's that dude? It's not necessary. I mean, it's it's, it's all not, the time that he put in to get up to that yeah. point that you're also paying. For. Yeah, even if the if the best of the best is going to stop and make something that took him only six hours, it's still the cleanliness in it. At least from an, an, another, and I'm really picky when I look at my own pipes. But when you see how perfectly, like Yushin or one of those guys, they could just take like a stick of yellow and. Coil Josh pot, it was just Josh Vineyard. Those guys can just do stuff with not a single flaw. Yeah, but there. I'm not going to pay you Sheen 20000 for a pipe. Well, and then 200000 for 10 pipes. Well, I mean, but if you owned an art gallery, you might be thinking about that because that's the kind of value that it actually brings because that is a spectator piece that is to be appreciated on that level. I mean, you know, you go into the nelson art gallery today in downtown kansas city to look at their finest piece of glass it's a vase from 1890 it's a galet a meal galet um you know maybe it took the galet himself or maybe his small team 30 40 hours of cutting on it maybe two hours of the actual furnace work um you know maybe no longer than Eugene spent on his but it's in there it's probably a hundred thousand dollars yeah what's what's the difference there is no difference it's the same thing it's the those you know the masters are the masters because for a reason i mean those those kids are pushing the limits of of really what it means and that they will be re history is going to look kindly upon this movement because it's spectacular in so many 
ways or our movements don't move this fast. It's new because it came, it, you know, it's birthing at the same time as social media and all that. It's, it's going to propel forward. You know, it'll be textbook stuff. You know, I dropped out of art school. I read all that crap. And it's like, you know, this, the way it, it fractaled out and expanded, it's, it, there's so much more to say about it than, you know, the slow tread of cubism or something, you know? Yeah. I just think it's a bit, who, who, I was just going to say, who are some of the people who are kind of blowing your mind right now in the glass world? Josh Vineyard. Yeah. Ben yeah. Cappen. Ben Cappen. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the best of the best are pretty, pretty obvious. It's almost a consensus when you, when you see them, they've got, uh, it's like a hundred thousand followers, but it's not because they bought them. It's you see the glass and you're like, damn, it's kind of blowing my mind. But yeah, I mean, I would be remiss to start naming. I would miss, I would miss somebody, but you know, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah, they're like waiting. Yeah, like, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, re I really do, you know, I really do. You know, banjos up there, like you mentioned, because it's so spectacular when you see one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you see one of those pieces, and you're like, oh my God, how many components are in that? Yeah, every, I just every, think, it's down to the micron, it looks like. I you just know? think there's a hard line to draw between a normal pipe that's the same quality as another dude's normal pipe, but just because your name is something it shouldn't cost three thousand dollars yeah name isn't everything though no. yeah because if yeah, you if you make a basic pipe for somebody and you're like yo this is three thousand dollars because it's me it's like yo now you're being disrespectful because the art of that skill to make that pipe more people have so it's kind of like why would yeah, i katie and I, I i mean maybe i won't speak for katie but we still just are charging by the hour we're yeah. not even we're not there yet to where it's like a name thing you know yeah no i rather i i buy all all my pipes from uh up and comers yeah awesome. but but it That's seems great. like you're both talking about different things i think brad and katie are talking about someone who objectively as a glass blower you look at their work and say that person is amazingly talented i think there are other people who are decently good glass blowers who are commanding super premium prices which is kind of what daguerre's referencing like oh, yes. where it's like that dude's work is not it's more hype than talent no 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 i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't say that i mean like specifically yushin he is amazingly talented amazing nothing but respect but it's hard to buy a normal pipe from those guys because it's almost like it's below them to make normal cheap pipes for normal people unless you're like a bougie boy that's got like gucci bags <laughs> like they're not even like messing their time with you. So, I I, under, I understand I understand the sentiment. Yeah. So like there's a you know there's a it's art and then it's like well once you know in five years and a thousand people have the skill your pipe's not as worth as much because a thousand. But you know that's that's uh, free market capitalism, man. Correct. Yeah, art Correct. is worth whatever you say it's worth. Yeah. yeah. It's just like when when yeah, I mean the market diamonds came out that, right if if the demand's yeah. not not there then the market should correct. I mean I guess. Yeah. The demand is there because yeah no i agree with you. that's why and just I think, just quickly I think I, it, is this is this josh vineyard yeah. yeah absolutely yeah he lives here in town he, he's really really good he's super good yeah adam reitz lives uh near here too he's yeah. really really good adam reitz big player big dog yep nothing's tight yeah, see, he's going in a direction nobody else is going. That stuff looks great. Well, that's what I was going to say. Another... He has his own unique style, right? Yeah, I think Josh is kind of a dual guy where he's um, not only can branch out in in form but and pattern. Yeah, I mean, he does both. He's kind of got his hands in everything, yeah. Kind of a guy he's so young, too. I remember when um, just, you know, I'm, I'm kind of an old guy. I just remember when, like, that, that first wave of, like, the – really brilliant young guys coming through i remember actually i i was gonna ask marcel about this i haven't met, met him face to face in a really, really long time i don't even know if he knows who i am but i remember starting out at bob's and going to a hemp fest an outdoor hemp fest that was uh like between eugene and portland somewhere and marcel i think maybe was like 16 and he had some booth where he had these bongs with like dolphins built up all the way around the stem flying off there and i was like god oh, that kid he's just barely that he's still in high school and like yeah the, the sculptors but well, i love that one yeah. hilarious <laughs> the sculptors are really really good i love people that do form yeah that's really cool yeah i like some it's of that, like, like glass scaffolding kind of 
right? Yeah. I just feel like someone's gonna break. It's like that. a polygon kind of situation. So then again, you look at that, like in the same vein of conversation, you see, you know, it's made up of seven mil yeah. bars. Everything's, you know, it looks like in in theory, oh, that's kind of basic, but just try to make every one exactly like that. Yep. So both sides are symmetrical. It's like yep. so incredibly hard, hard yeah. at that point. So yes. yeah, the the best guys make the make the easy stuff so flawless. It really is almost no argument when you hold it in your hand and mm -hmm. and take a look but i do understand there is yes i mean but that's the flux like name over yep. quality yep. and that's where the friction lies and there are many you know the, the numbers game it was 200 million people in the united states you're gonna get the guys that are just buying name but that's with anything yeah really you know so and the market's big enough i i for a long time i thought gosh there's gonna be too many glass blowers and the market's gonna the bottom's gonna fall out but the, with the expansion of of legalization and peter you could speak to this um with the expansion of legalization just the demand for glasses going through the roof i can't yep. keep up with my own orders yeah and uh you know just there's so much room so i i, I imagine there's all kinds of customers buying everything it's kind of like mm -hmm. a payday for artists yeah. at this point i'm just to the point in my life in my career where i need i need certain things because they break all the time like i'm in Absolutely. consumption so people pick it up and it's always boom 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 and then even just on this show i mean we get so high i've, I've broken two pipes on this show alone just <laughs> stupid so that's awesome i mean i gotta i gotta we love that man yeah, yeah. you're like job you another one i guess yeah because it's glass <laughs> it's gonna break it's a replenishable yeah yeah, yeah yeah bob said rule one is glass breaks yeah so that's why i'm really like i'm trying glass, to find like but all glass does is break yeah, yeah. so <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I try to find good artists that I can pay to put food on their plate and take care of each other. And that's, that's awesome. It's people like you that really are making it, you know, keeping the keeping everybody hopeful and on the yeah. rise and they get to the shop every day because yeah, of buyers those, like that. I feel like um, my money is better spent there because the big guys, they already got lots of money, right? They don't need mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snoop Dogg is going to pick up. Yeah, dog I mean, grab a pipe and throw yeah. extra racks. Yeah. He goes by his pipes with diamonds in them, like yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like. Uh, oh, oh, I have a question. Have you ever made blown ash of a dog or a loved one into a pipe? We get okay. asked. People, uh, we get hit up all the time for that. Yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, what? I want to do that. You need to do that. I want to do that. Oh, you want to do that? Yeah. No, yeah. I have are, my. Are you waiting for your dog to die? Well, no, my grandpa died, my dad died, and my dog died. So I kind of want to make like a trilogy. So they're always with me when I smoke. Um, what's um, Chandler's oh, Instagram? Yeah. Our friend, Booney Swag. Um, it's B-O-O-N-I-E-S-W-A-G on Instagram. She's really good at making the cremation pendants and marbles yeah. and stuff. She's figured out. Um, the best way to not trap, it's easy to trap air bubbles doing that, but she's yep. figured out a good way. Yep. She learned here and uh, she's really great. She's in Denver. She's close to you. You can hit her up. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. I find, I've asked a couple of people and it seems like they've been a bit woozy on it. Right. Because she. I mean, that's the yeah. thing is you got to, you know, you got to respect. It's intense. Yep. You got the yep. ashes of a loved one. Yep. You know, they, they're the person coming to you. Obviously they, it's a heartfelt thing. They want this memorial thing. So it's, yep. it, you got to pick the right glass blower. That's not going to, spill it or yep. put cigarette ashes in it or whatever. Yeah, respect it. Yeah, yeah respect it. But so, that, so like, Daguerre, but for job. you, this would be something to put up on the shelf, right? Like, no. Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot. No. Uh, yeah, something to put on the shelf or, yeah, no. you're going to put it but, back. But, but you That's, just said no. you're breaking rigs all the time, so. Well, well the pendant, so... pendant is pretty good because no, no, the, no. the solid pendant itself isn't going to break. If anything breaks, it'll just be the loop, and then that could be replace the loop we could put another loop on any any time so i am specifically talking about my own personal pipes mine don't break it's just like all the stuff that's out in the world that everyone yeah. okay so know, like, so you wouldn't put it out in front no, this is like when you're home alone okay yeah, like maybe eat some l eat some mushrooms smoke out of that see if i can talk to them uh let's see what is this <laughs> damn right i know what i want to tell bob he knows what he wants yeah yeah but no i i uh i want something that um 
a pipe's a companion and, and it's with you on your journey and my journey is quite <laughs> the journey so it'd be cool to have my ancestors with me i th i think that um yeah and that's why katie and i just never let go of that chill on form yep because like you said uh it's it's it would be nice if everybody could have a little piece of heady and not yeah. be too out of reach price wise for everybody yeah. to get a little well, heady something i will say with the chillums uh i remember i lived in minneapolis one time and my arm got cut in half and i couldn't smoke because my arm was all like ah. you know like this so uh there was a glass blower from um god what the hell are they called like minnesota legit or something from the hideaway anyways he put a bite mark in the end so i could bite it with my teeth pack it with one hand and then light it oh that's awesome yeah yeah oh. the, i've seen a little bite grip yeah dude that was it saved me man i remember like i went back it's like yo i have one hand i can't smoke like i'm losing my shit and he's like yo just bite mark man you can bite it pack it light it up one-handed yeah that's kind of why brad and i always stick to that flat mouthpiece on our chillums because you yep. know, we like people to be able to like if you're outside hold it in your mouth and be block the, we got to block the wind it's super functional yeah i'm just thinking about yeah there you yep. go katie's katie's chill but yeah man those bite uh, marks oh uh, yeah no, awesome. i see it. it it's like instead of being round it's like pushed it's in right? yeah. yeah we use some uh, uh but that's still kind of hold with the lips unless you got really big lips well yeah my i push mine pretty flat john kenny yeah minnesota legit man i used to work with uh wally from the hideaway i used to run uh uptown it used to be a shop a shop in uptown minneapolis called glassland and i used to run that back in the day but we used to get all of our stuff from wally from the hideaway up in uptown or up in dinky town because he's right by the u u of m that's awesome. I love I yeah. love hearing about those shops that have been fighting the good fight for so long. <laughs> Dude, man, I remember I used to run to Minneapolis all the time for different things. And when I stopped there, I'd get a whole bunch of pipes from them guys. Yeah, awesome. Bring them back to the Dakotas. So this is what you were talking about, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'll try to keep, keep that going. Got to get lip grip sometimes. Mm -hmm. Get both hands free. But yeah, like it's, it's important for... Her. For you know to to stay, to have something that's under two hundred bucks that yeah. someone can get something that still worked as much as yeah. details I can pack in from you know in three and a half inches or four inches or whatever. Yeah. All right. Well, I uh, Gemma is wrap. That's my six year old is wrapping school up right now. But cool. uh, I think I think we have run. successfully done a mic check. With 150 of our closest friends. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> so, all right, I'll uh, yeah, coordinate yeah. with you guys to kick off the glass conversations. Daguerre, I will. Uh, Daguerre, be nice to meet you. you and Thank you. Texting nice to meet you, you both today, too. and I'll. We will be live again. Uh, oh, sorry. Do, do we know what time uh, the show floor opens tomorrow? Uh, ten ish. Nine ish. Okay. We're probably going to be here nine ish. Set up the rest of the audio, get all the mics and the headphones squared away. And then. And, and time zone wise, it's currently five o'clock there, right? Five oh five, correct. Oh. Yep. Okay. All right. So you're two hours ahead of me. Yes. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you, everyone. And, so, wait, uh, are, when are we doing this again tomorrow? Is that what you were saying? No, 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 no. So tomorrow, to, yeah, we'll, we'll coordinate a time to do okay. the glass conversation. Tomorrow all day we're doing uh, a live broadcast from gotcha. the attractive convention center expo floor uh, and the next day all day with those two cats right there. Yeah, hey, you guys have a good show, man. Hey, thank you. Yep. It's awesome. Thanks, Peter. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, y'all. All right. And yeah, we're that, at your service. Just let us know. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. You too.